welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be going over uh, how to deal with missing values by doing mean imputation. So basically um, finding your missing values in a data set and then saying, hey, I want to take these and transform these to whatever the mean of the data is. Um, as before, as, as with the previous video, I should say, uh, we'll be creating our own data set uh, because we need missing variables to actually go ahead and you know give an example of what to do with them. We can't be using uh, you know things like uh, carrot or Palmer penguins or the the Star Wars data sets that are found commonly in R. Um, so the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be loading a couple of packages. So what we'll be needing is going to be uh, ggplot, uh, calplot, and zoo ggplot just so that we can visualize things to help us understand what's going on uh calplot to kind of combine uh visuals together and then zoo just uh, later on we'll be using a uh a role apply function uh you, you'll we'll get to that later uh all right so let's load those in now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our data sets or data set uh singular i should say uh, and so for this, basically, we're going to set, uh, we're going to create a new variable called x using the rnorm function, which just means it's going to create a normal distribution. And we're going to set, uh, we're going to make a, a 100 observations. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we now have a uh, value, so basically a variable uh, with 100 observations. And next, we're going to uh, take this, we're going to run the sample function between uh, the first and the hundredth. Uh, observation, so the entire data set, and we're going to pick 25 uh, samples at random, and we're going to impute uh, NA into them, basically making them, you know, uh, missing values for the sake of this video. So let's go ahead and run this. And briefly, just looking at our variables up here, we can already see that we have indeed uh, integrated missing values success successfully into our variable. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create uh, an imputed variable where uh, every missing uh, every missing observation will be turned into the mean of x, which is our variable. So we do this by uh, calling or making a new variable called x imputed uh, and using an if else statement, meaning that uh, if an observation of x is missing is n a, then we will take the uh, mean of x and turn it into whatever missing value uh, or whatever missing value it ran into and then we will also use the na.rm equal true meaning that it enables this function to remove uh, missing values so we're going to head and run this and then as you can see these missing values that we see up here have suddenly uh, disappeared next we're going to go ahead and combine these into a data frame just to make it easier to uh graph because uh graphing with data frames and i mean it's just a, a nicer way to have your your data organized and then now if we look at this data frame if it opens we should have our x and our x imputed and you can see that basically wherever we're running into uh, na's or missing values we're basically having uh the same repeated value show up again and again and again which is uh the mean of the data and now, just so that we can visualize what's going on, I'm going to create uh, two histograms using ggplot, histogram one and histogram two. Uh, one will be the original variable that has uh, missing values, and one will be the imputed variable. And quickly, all I do is I call uh, ggplot, I then select df, right? And then I set the aesthetics to x is equal to x. This is just um, you know, x is equal to what? In this case, it's equal to x because that's what we have called our variable. Uh, it's just kind of a coincidence and here x will be equal to x imputed because you know that's our imputed variable and then we'll call the uh, geom histogram function and we'll choose you know how much how we want to bin it in this case i'm just using bins of 10 we have uh, 100 observations therefore we will have 10 bins obviously um and then all of this is just um you know bells and whistles to make it look a little nicer you know setting a uh, an alpha of 0 0.5 to make it a little see-through and then just adding a nice little title just to make it a bit more um, easy to distinguish when we do look at the graph. So let's go ahead and create uh, these histograms. And then uh, what we're going to do on top of this, just to kind of uh, give a little more uh, help visualizing what's going on, is we're going to create uh, line plots as well. Uh, as before, we'll be creating uh, them, we'll be creating them, not just visualizing them, so that we can actually combine them in calplot later. And as before, I'm calling, actually, let me make this a little 
clearer. I'm calling the uh, ggplot function using df. The aesthetic is x is equal to the, the length of x, and y will be equal to x. And then we're calling the geom line, and then we'll just be calling it, or we're just using the uh, blue versus red uh, original variable versus uh, imputed variable. So let's go ahead and run or create these plots. And now uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine them using the calplot package that I described earlier. Uh, if you've watched some of my videos before, you know I'm a big fan of using calplot. I think it's really useful, it's very intuitive, it's very easy to use. So let's go ahead and run this so that we can talk about uh, the visualization. Okay, now that it has loaded up, let me make this a bit bigger so that we can actually uh, see what's going on more easily and let this kind of re-render so that it doesn't look all squibbled up. All right, there we go. So now if we look at this plot uh, in blue in the line chart and in the histogram, we have the original variable. And then in red in the line chart and the histogram, we have the imputed variable. And so if we look first at the line chart, uh, what we're seeing is a bunch of breaks in the line. So there's a break between this data point, and this data point, this data point, and this data point, and so on and so forth throughout the chart. And of course, in the imputed variable, these breaks uh, don't exist. It's one smooth continuous line. And of course, that's what you would expect by having all of your data imputed, you wouldn't have anything missing. Um, what we really want to pay attention to is what's in the histogram. If we look here, uh, it's basically just a count of the different values between mostly what it looks about negative three all the way to plus three. And of course, uh, most of them will be at zero because it is a normal distribution. But look uh, at zero, which should roughly be uh, the mean of the data set. I think it was 0 0.13. Um, we have about, let's line this up, maybe 13 observations that are around the mean in the original value, whereas in the imputed value, we have roughly, let's call this, I don't know, 38. And that's exactly what you would expect. You would expect, because we have imputed all the missing values to the mean, you're going to have many more uh, observations at your mean in the imputed data set, and this is something we need to talk about. Um, because mean imputation is only going, or this style specifically of mean imputation is only going to be useful if your data is normally distributed. Let's say if the data wasn't normally distributed in the original data set, let's say uh, this was shifted all the way to the right over here and most of the observations were actually at negative two, and then suddenly you introduced uh, a bunch of observations at the mean and you'd have kind of this peak here at negative two and this peak here at negative, or this peak here at zero. Um, it, that would fundamentally change the way your data functions. It, it would be a misrepresentation of the data, and therefore this would not be appropriate to do. So before you do any sort of mean imputation, or as you're doing it rather, or either or, you can do it before or while you're doing it, you need to have kind of this check to see, hey, is my, nor is my data normally distributed? Now, of course, I knew beforehand it was because I created this data set with the uh, normal distribution function. So of course it was going to be normally distributed, but if you're working with world real world data, um, you cannot simply impute the mean, uh, if most of your data is not centered around the mean, because then, uh, that would be a mischaracterization of your data. But in this case it is okay. However, if you're doing, uh, statistics later on, you will have to take into account the fact that you have now skewed your, or not skewed, you have significantly normalized your data. But now this, of course, begs the question of, well, what do you do if your data is not normally distributed like this and you have uh, missing data and you want to use mean imputation? Well, you can still do that, but you'll have to kind of uh, change a little bit. And if you've watched my previous video on uh, winds arising with rolling means, you, this is basically we're going to apply the same thing, but this time with mean imputation. So quickly, uh, examples of data where this would be appropriate to use mean imputation, where you would expect things to be um, normally distributed might be if you're looking at, you know, things like uh, height or IQ or income distributions tend to be also normally distributed, um, things of that nature. But if you're looking at, you know, anything that is kind of seasonal or over time, uh, those do not tend to be normally distributed depending on how you're looking at the data. For example, if you're looking at sales over, uh, you know, a, a multitude of years, it's not going to be necessarily normally distributed. Or if you're looking at uh, you know, stock prices over time or things of that nature. And the fact is that most of the time for most um, 
applications in, in data analytics and data science, your data is not going to be this kind of nice unimodal and normally distributed data set. And so because of that, I mean, it will be sometimes. To be fair, it will sometimes be that case, but most of the time it won't be. And because of that, we'll now look at a different way of doing it where uh, the data does not just have one single uh, bump, it has uh, several, meaning it is, uh, you know, not unimodal, it's going to be multimodal, two, three, four, five, or more of kind of these centrally um, distributed uh, bell curves throughout the data set. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create uh, a new uh, data frame, specifically a time series data frame, something that's um, far more akin to what you would um, run into into the real world. And then we'll do the same thing, we'll do a uh, normal mean imputation. And then we'll do a uh, rolling mean imputation so that you can see the difference and see why uh, with what is most often uh, real world data, why using rolling uh, averages and rolling uh, applications to data transformation um, makes more sense. And so to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the data frame. So first we're going to create, um, well, we're going to set a value of n, which we'll use later uh, to create our data frame. Then we'll create a data frame called a TS data, TS standing for uh, time series in this case. Uh, we will call the data frame function, and then we'll create a date. And the date will basically be a sequence uh, as a date starting from January 1st, uh, 2021. And then there's going to be a um, increment function, and so the increment will be by day. Um, and then for the length, basically, it will be set to n, which we previously set to 1000. So this all together means that we will have a data set with a 1000 uh, days uh, moving, you know, by increments of individual days starting January 1st, uh, 2021. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to then insert a value. Basically, now what we have in our uh, data is we have an x value, but we don't have a y value, we don't have a value of either, um, you know, we, we can pretend it's sales or uh, stock prices, or number of customer complaints or incidents of you know, traffic violations, whatever it is, whatever your data is, it's not uh, too important. The important part is that we, we just have it in there. And to do this, uh, we're going to call, we're going to create a new value within the TS data data frame. We're going to use the R gamma function, which is going to create a uh, gamma distribution. And these things here are just kind of base parameters. Uh, well, I mean, the N is the N that we used previously. We wanted a thousand data points. Obviously we wouldn't want, you know, a uh, hundred because it, it wouldn't fit into our data. Uh, and then shape and scale are basically just base parameters. They're going to give it, um, a shape rather than another shape. There's no better shape or worse shape in this case for what we're doing. It's just used as an example. We could use two and three or one and three or two and four. It, it doesn't really matter too much. So let's go ahead and do this. And then we have to introduce uh, missing values into our data set because you know this is all about imputing uh, missing data. And to do this, we're going to uh, sample from n from the value um, the value variable. So n again being a thousand. So we're going to sample all thousand uh, observations, and then we're going to out of those uh, thousand samples, we're going to choose uh, twenty percent of them, so zero point two, uh, and set them to na. So you know missing values basically. So let's go ahead and insert this. And now let's go take a look at our data real quick and see if we, yeah, so we did indeed input some missing values. Good. All right. So now that we have our data set and we have our missing values, I'm going to do a uh, standard mean imputation. Then I'm going to do a rolling mean imputation. And then we're going to uh, graph them and compare them just so that you can see why using rolling means is far, um, I mean, it's more, I'm not going to say superior, it's just the correct way of doing it. The other way is not inferior, it's just incorrect. And so the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to uh, create a new variable called TS data uh, imputed one that is going to be based off of TS data. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, uh, we're going to uh, select the values and we're going to say if it's NA, basically if it is missing, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the mean of the value and impute it into the value. So every time uh, this little code here runs into a missing value in the value variable, it's going to impute the mean of the value variable. 
So it's basically just going to impute the mean, uh, whatever the mean ends up being. All right, so let's go look at this real quick and see if we have any missing values, which we don't seem to have. Good. All right, so there's no missing value, so this worked successfully. Now we're going to go ahead and create uh, another uh, way of imputing um, uh, imputing the mean into the data, into the missing data, but this time we'll be doing it with a rolling mean uh, from the zoo package. So if you've watched my previous videos, I've done uh, rolling means for winds rising data using the zoo package. It has a roll apply function, which is very useful for this. And so let's paste uh, the code into here. And so basically now we're going to create a uh, new data set called TS data imputed two to compare to the first one. It's going to be based off of uh, the TS data data set. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set the value within this imputed data set to, and then we're going to use the role apply function to say that any, so we're going to then um, take the value, set a window of five. What this means is that for every five, every uh, chunk of five observations within the thousand observations that we have, we're going to count that as a single chunk and we're going to look for, or we're going to impute the mean uh, at every fifth observation meaning every fifth observation or chunk of five observations, sorry, the mean is going to change and therefore the imputation is going to change. So it's going to be a much more, um, the mean that is imputed is going to be much more representative of the local data rather than the data set as a whole. And to do this, we're going to set a function that's going to apply onto X and the function is going to be very simple. It's going to be almost the same. It's going to be an if else function. So basically if else, if, so if else basically meaning the first argument is going to be is NA. So if it finds uh, an NA value within that chunk of uh, five observations, it's then going to apply the mean of X. It makes sense. It's, it's, it's almost the same as what we did previously, but we're just restricting um, the observations or the, we're, we're restricting the operation to chunks of five observations. And then the NA.RM equal to is just allowing it to uh, play with missing values. If we didn't have this, then we would get these errors saying, hey, there's missing values, what's going on? And then basically what we're going to be doing down here is we're just going to be closing up uh, the function and then add in some things uh, down here that will allow it to perform the mean or calculate the mean, sorry, uh, properly. And then again, uh, fill missing values properly without having any errors. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. So now that we have our um, traditionally uh, mean imputed variable, not traditionally, I would say, uh, whole data mean imputed variables and our rolling mean imputed variables, let's go ahead and create some graphs and then uh, combine them all together. And then we can see what happened uh, by comparing these two different styles of imputation. And now basically I'm just going to go ahead and copy in a bunch of text, which is just a bunch of uh, ggplots. So all I'm doing here, uh, let me separate this a little bit so that it's a little more obvious. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm going to be creating uh, two histograms and two line plots because they'll show slightly different data. And uh, basically the histogram one and the line plot one will be um, our traditional mean imputation. And then the uh, histogram two and the line two plots will be our rolling mean imputations. Um, briefly for an explanation, we're just calling ggplot we're calling those uh, newly imputed uh, variables. And then we're just calling like a geom histogram or a geom line. And then after that, I'm just kind of adding some bells and whistles to make it look a little nicer in the graph. But these aren't actually required to, to make the graph. So let's go ahead and create those, see if there's anything, there's no errors, fantastic. And then we're going to use uh, the calplot package to combine these in, into one visualization and then we can talk about them. And to do that, I'm just going to copy in uh, this code real quick, which is just um, basically saying uh, we'll do two rows, one row of histograms, uh, one row of uh, line plots, and then setting or telling it how many rows and how many columns there are. And this might take uh, a little bit to render, so I'll go ahead and pause the video and get back to it when it uh, loads up. That was quicker than anticipated, so let's go ahead and make this bigger so that we can look at it. Um, so this will this will this will re-render um, sooner rather than later. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and start talking about it. So if we look in the blue here, we have our traditionally imputed data, and in the orange here, we have our uh, rolling mean imputed data. 
And at the top, uh, we have histograms. So basically, if we look at the histograms, it's just giving us a distribution of the data points in the value uh, portion of our data. So if we look here, we have what is maybe a slightly uh, skewed data set, and then we have a huge spike here at what we would anticipate the mean to be. However, if we look here, we have what appears to be a much more normally distributed data set because uh, we, we haven't overrepresented the mean because every time we imputed the mean into the data set, it was different. It was um, relative to the local data. And this is why using a rolling means for this kind of data is much more appropriate. You don't overrepresent one uh, one observation, which may not be uh, represented or represented throughout your whole data set. And now let's go look uh, at the line plots below. And I'm not sure if you can see this, and it's not too obvious, but if we look through the line plot for the uh, traditional mean imputation, uh, around here, you can kind of see this kind of line forming in the middle of the data, this kind of disconnected uh, line. And that's basically all the mean data we imputed because again, remember every single missing observation was replaced by the same value. Whereas here in the uh, rolling mean imputation, uh, we don't see that. What we see is just a, data set that is more that is uninterrupted and that seems to make i would say more or less uh some sense right because we weren't imputing the same variable over and over and over and over again and the reason this is important is because uh this this method method here on the right gives you a much more if assuming you had missing variables will give you a much more accurate view of what the real data would look like without those missing values whereas this one here is going to skew your observations towards one single uh, measure and that can be very important if you're looking at say um sales on specific days you'd be like hey oh look on this i mean let, let's pretend this is a day on this day i got like 300 sales like what's going on here but really you're not right whereas here you're like oh yeah like there's there's a steady stream that there's like a peak here but um really it's distributed across days and you would end up making uh better decisions based off of this data on the right than this data on the left so if you ever run into the situation where you have to impute data and you think that imputing the mean is uh the correct thing to do go ahead and use uh, a rolling mean imputation because it's going to make your data uh, much better of course you'll still have to contend with the fact that you had missing data and that these are not quote unquote uh true variables but they will there's a much greater chance of them of them being representative of your data set uh, than doing just a, a a flat mean imputation and so that's all i had uh for this video for you guys um yeah so next i'll be doing um some videos on how to clean uh string variables in r because that is also a very common and often very time consuming aspect of data science or data uh data well data science as well especially data science there's a lot of a lot of data cleaning in data science um but especially in data analytics as well you you have to clean your variables a lot and a lot of the times your data will be string variables so i'll be doing probably two videos on that and then finally, after that, I'll be doing a big, probably 30, 40, maybe 50 minute video on a full, you know, A to Z front to back uh, data cleaning project, but that will incorporate all of the things that I've taught previously. And I hope this video is useful for you guys. Uh, hopefully the videos I'll put out in the future will also be very useful for you guys. Um, I'll be posting the uh, code down in the, the description below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a good day. I still, uh, <laughs> I still don't have an outro, but yeah, uh, have a good day.